I received an Arduino Uno re-implementation to make a video about this board. This re-implementation does not come from the far, far east, but was sent to me directly from the Arduino headquarters. For legal reasons, I'm not allowed to use the term clone in connection with original Arduino hardware, which I used in an ironic way in the first version of this video. The exact name is Arduino Uno R4 Minima. As usual with re-implementations, the copy looks very much like the original. This is especially true for the let's say specific arrangement of the pin headers on the board, which has triggered lots of discussions over the years because it doesn't really match the standard prototype board grid. The reset button and the socket for the power plug are soldered in the same place as on the original board. The same applies to the USB socket which is significantly smaller because it is a more modern USB-C interface. All in all, computer muggles will have a hard time distinguishing the original from the re-implementation. However, there is a nasty surprise in the core component of the re-implementation, because this is definitely not compatible with the original. While the original UNO has had an 80 mega chip installed since the beginning of time, the re-implementation makes use of a Renesis microcontroller. Well, I didn't get this re-implementation from a dubious source on the darknet at an unbeatable low price, but received it directly from the manufacturer of the original board. So why was a fake UNO sent to me? I'm constantly being assured by Arduino that the R4 is indeed a real UNO, just made better and faster, because the fanbase always asks for more of everything. I am one of those big fans of the UNO precisely because of its relatively simple, well documented architecture. For teaching coding with the UNO there is... less is more. Alright, let's play their game and install the software needed for the R4. This is done via the Arduino IDE as usual. After entering the source for the board... You can select the appropriate packages... ...and finally install it all. The UNO R4 can now be selected via the drop down menu. To people who keep claiming that the original UNO is a weak microcontroller, I always point out that this tiny piece of silicon has enough computing power to control CNC machines very precisely and in real time. The open source software that does this is called Garble, and for the original UNO the code is compiled and uploaded fairly quickly, even with my decayed old laptop. So let's plug in the new, supposedly better UNO re-implementation and install Garble on that one too. Oops! Doesn't work! The compiler reports errors and aborts the project. Hmm... The Arduino sales department assured me that pretty much anything that runs on the original will also run on the re-implementation. Well, 
maybe Garble is just the small percentage that doesn't run. To be honest, it is also a fairly extensive piece of software by UNO standards, which squeezes pretty much everything out of the AT Mega. So let's connect just 8 LEDs to the GPIOs and show with a very few lines of code how to count from 0 to 255 in the binary number system. Works as intended on the original. But the re-implementation aborts again with an error message even in this 11 lines of code with absolutely no libraries included. A look at the datasheets shows quite quickly that the different architecture and pin assignment of the built-in microcontroller is the cause. Purely from the hardware point of view, this cannot work one to one. Honestly, the re-implementation is supposed to be totally compatible, but it can't even flash 8 flimsy LEDs in the way the original can. Of course, it is possible to adapt the compiler so that this example also runs on the re-implementation, but this is cheating on the students, because an 8-bit port is programmed which does not exist on the re-implementation at all. I bet the Arduino software department became sick because of all the extra if statements that have to be implemented, just because the marketing department wants to voice this board on customers as an Arduino Uno. Many people in the community working free of charge will also vomit because now even more beginner questions such as IT DOESN'T WORK have to be answered, simply because an UNO is no longer equal to another UNO. The Arduino sales department, why on earth would you want to call this thing UNO? It just isn't. If you think the market is waiting for more computing power in the Arduino Uno form factor, then it's perfectly fine to build something matching, but don't create unnecessary confusion by labeling this board Uno. You already have plenty of more powerful boards than the Uno on offer and whenever you have installed a different type of microcontroller, the resulting board has been given a completely different name. Why did you give up on that with the UNO brand? It's not because the original UNO in version R3 with the ATmega 328P microcontroller will be discontinued. At least I was promised by you that this won't be the case in the foreseeable future. UNO means first and this platform except the re-implementation is still an ideal introduction to microcontrollers for teachers and students. Anyone who understands the ATmega 328P down to registers, timers and ports will have little trouble transferring this to more complex systems. The original UNO is uniquely well documented and firmly anchored in the community precisely because of its simplicity. In my opinion, version R4 of the UNO is definitely no step forward because of a more complex microcontroller and poorly implemented fake compatibility with the original. By trying to establish a fake UNO, you are eroding the position that the original board successfully occupies in teaching as well as in the community. Dear Arduino Marketing Department, don't call this thing UNO. If you're still watching this video, feel free to leave comments on what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.